sit. We always have Sherlock sit. We step away from him. I'm going to give the, the new person who he's greeting a little treat for him. I'm going to go back next to him. And we're practicing his little sit stay there. He's going to wait until I lean over with my right hand and I say, go say hi. He's going to go over there, get the treat. Come. Good. You see that he wants to pull right back, like he wants to take the treat and pull, run right back to me. It's because, of course, we practice this a lot of times, many, many times. And he is all about coming back when you say, come. So this is, this is an exercise that you practice in a, it, it's, it's in a real life context because he's actually greeting somebody. And this treat, this teaches him to greet somebody in a respectful way. There's no, no more jumping. He used to jump, but now he doesn't. And um, he actually, rather than be obnoxious in any way, he just wants to run right back to you after he goes to say hello to that person. And you've got that sit stay. You see how I just practiced that sit stay. I walked around both ways. He's waiting. The leash is always loose. I'm never restraining him because that will cause stress and overexcitement and then everything will fall apart. So always keep it loose. And go say hi. That's the second time you send him over. Come, gets a treat from the person. Good. And I'm not backing away because I don't want to back out of the shot, but you know, in the other sit, in the other uh, clip of how I show you how to do the come command, I'm backing away. But this is a great example of uh, when I can't back away because of the way I practice backing away when I call him to come to me, he runs to me. So it's a great example of how later on, if you practice in a certain way, he'll just do it that way every time, even though you're not able to do your, your moves. And of course, that means we practice this a lot, so he's doing really well. A little sit stay, one last time to be sent over. Go say hi, gets the treat. Come. Good. It's just a great little exercise to do with friends, family. The kids can do it with each other. Uh, anybody can do it. It helps his uh, sit stay. It helps his go command. It helps his come command. It's just a great, uh, a great exercise to practice. And it's in a real life context. If you're going to do this, do it in, in the area where you think he actually will be meeting people. And I would suggest inside of your front door, you have a big space after you know inside the front door and leads into the living room dining room it's a great place to practice it because that's usually where he's going to meet new people or people coming home or you know whoever's coming through that front door if he practices this exercise there you'll see over time he'll be calmer and calmer in that area because that's where he associates that calm type of behavior sit. I always have him sit before I open the door because it makes the whole exercise harder. Okay, I'm going to have him sit again. Sit, because I want to make sure that you can see us. Um, and then once he's, and he doesn't, didn't pop up and he doesn't pop up when that door is open, which is good. But then I, ste I step out and he needs to stay in a sit stay and wait until I step back next to him. No. See how he's really anxious? Sometimes he'll do that and I have a feeling he's going to do that a lot with you at home. So you really have to set the bar high and really make sure that he really waits. See how I kind of tap him a little bit? And if he travels, like he, he'll kind of get up and travel forward, I want you to do this. Okay, step into him and reset him back to where you started and really set the bar high because if you do this in the beginning, you'll have a much better sit stay as time goes on and, and a much calmer dog if he gets past this whole traveling thing where he inches forward. So that was much better. He waits till I come back next to him and then I'm going to say, okay, and he's going to want to rush out there, but just if you walk slowly and you tap as you're coming out, sit. And then once he's through the threshold, you have him sit and you release him here. Go. Now he's free. That's the best way to do that. And then I'm just going to show you going in. So here in this yard, he would be, he'd be free out here running around for a few minutes or 20 minutes or whatever. Goes to the bathroom. We call him to come. He comes back. We put the leash on, we have him sit, and then we do the same thing on the way in. 
He waits, we step through. He never comes through unless he walks through with us. He never follows us through the door in or out, which greatly decreases the chances of him ever bolting out a front door and chasing you. If you always do it this way and you're practicing at your front door, and it doesn't even mean you're going for a walk or going outside. You could just do this exercise two times in, two times out, um, and finishing with the last time in every day, and it would be really good for him so that it, that, that would teach him not to bolt through the front door. So through all this talking here, he's still waiting in the sit stay. Okay, he walks through with me. See how he's not pulling on the way in, but that's because he'd much rather be outside. But that's the front door or door routine. You can do it at any door. Front door is the most important one and uh, it just would take you two minutes a day to go several times in and out and it's a great exercise to do every day. We've also been practicing just walking, walking around, just leash walking, basic leash walking. If you want him to walk next to you, you can do these little left circles, sit, and then okay, and then Left circle, sit, okay. Left circle, sit, and I'm gonna come back to you and do one more facing you. Okay, you can do 10, or, 10 in a row if you want, or six or whatever you wanna do. Sit, but doing that exercise every time that you go left, um, he's drawn back next to you. The leash is loose because he's drawn back next to you. He's not pulling. And it's a very dominant uh, move as well where your body is kind of hurting him in the right direction. And there's no leash tension. And of course, leash tension is our enemy. And I always end this, end up that little exercise with just a little, another walk around, sit, stay. And maybe a reward good and then go and then a little free time come on buddy down everybody loves Sherlock of course and they loved him before he got his cute little haircut which he just got yesterday and now they really love him so this is a really kind of a crazy place to do a down stay Good, you see if I reward him as a distraction's approaching? Good, it enables him to stay there. If you use that little trick when things are happening and might be at your house and the kids are playing, the kids are running around or something's going on that normally he would pop up out of a downstay, uh, it's, best, it's best done in a downstay, exactly the way you saw me do it. Um, it will enable him to get over that distraction, so to speak, be able to handle it later, and you don't have to use it for that situation anymore. You just use it for whatever the next situation is that you find that he had a problem with. But you saw those guys are walking right past. Good, but he, he was munching on a little piece of uh, this Natural Balance dog food treat here and uh, kept him calm enough so he could actually stay in his downstay. And we have a, oh, let's, let's wait for this one last distraction to show up. See, oh, he, he saw it, but he's still there. He turns back to me, he gets a little treat. It's passing by slowly, but surely. Oh, geez, it's stuck. No, it's, it's moving again. Good. And you see how we can keep him there with distractions, carts coming from behind. That's a pretty tough one. So he did really well and we're gonna release him. Okay, sit, and then go, and he's free. Good job, okay. So sit, open the crate door, and this is really hard for him, he loves his crate, and see how he wants to go in there? But notice how the leash is loose, but if he kind of pops up, you just tap. Just tap and he goes back, and then with your right hand, go. Send him in. And he loves to go in there because guess what happens? Every time he goes in, he gets a little treat. I reach in there, 
and I just unhook I just unhook the leash from his collar. And what I did for a long time was give him another treat just when he closed the door because a lot of dogs would have a bad association with that door closing in front of them because they want to get out or they don't want to be confined. But we got over that because I give him a treat and he's munching on that as I close the door. It's desensitized him to that occurrence and he probably kind of likes it. He's like, oh good, the door is going to be closed now because I'm getting a treat. That's when I get a treat. So we don't have a problem with that anymore. Um, he doesn't bark in there. He's been very easy to handle in the crate since he's been here with us. He, although he has been uh, in a room with some other dogs in crates, so he's never alone. Sometimes when they go back home, it's different because they, uh, first of all, never did the crate in that environment with, with their owners. And also, they're uh, alone, whereas here, there are always other dogs around as well. And so, they, you know, they rebel against the crate for a little while, but if you stick with this routine, it might just be a couple of days, a few days, a week, it's different with every dog. He'll accept the fact that that's going to happen there as well, and, and you'll see he'll settle in. I feed him his meals in there, I give him little bones and treats and chewies in there to chew on. In his mind, this is a place where good stuff happens in the crate. And uh, he sleeps in here overnight. There's some really cushy blankets in there. You can put whatever you want in there to make it really comfortable. But in his mind, that is his den. Dogs are naturally den animals, so that's his den. And he, um, <clears throat> he really loves it in there. And you control his access in and out. So because you control his access, he has to wait for your permission to go in and out of his den, his favorite place in the whole world, that makes him perceive you in, as, as the boss. It really helps a lot. So you may think this has nothing to do with uh, other commands. No. If he tries to come out, you say no. And just do this little token. See, I'm kind of bouncing the door. But this does have to do with other commands because if, he's, if he takes you more seriously because of the way you put him in and out of his den, then he's definitely going to come more readily to you when you call him to come or ask him to do other commands. So you see how I'm taking him out? Good boy, he's waiting at this open door. And this is all, also an exercise that I did for a while. Good. If he doesn't come out, he gets rewards. If he did come out, I'd say no, and I'd give that a little close there, but he's really good now. And so I could step back like this, and he really respects this boundary, and he is waiting for me to allow him to come out. Okay, as you can see, always close this door, because if you don't close the door, he's going to run back in there, he's going to want to hang out in there, and then you squander your greatest power of the crate by controlling his access in and out. So this door is closed when he's in, and it's closed when he's out. And if you don't do it that way, there's really no point in using a crate. You can just use a little uh, you know, box or something, a little doghouse. So always make sure that door is closed at all times. OK. When I'm practicing the come command with Sherlock, I always do it the same way. If you do it the same way every time, it'll become like second nature and it'll just be really easy to do. So I always do it the same way, left hand leash, put your hand through that leash handle. There's no way to lose him. Um, you can have this left hand for free as well. So if you need it, it's there to use. So put that over your wrist like that. Um, right hand reward. When you're calling him to come to you, see he's not gonna stop staring at me, so I'm gonna create it, my own distraction go. He's just going to go follow that piece of cheese over there. There it is. Come. Good. So he came to this right hand target. It's a closed fist. And in an emergency, there doesn't have to be anything in it because when you practice, you practice with a reward. In an emergency, when there's no treat, there's no leash, <clears throat> and you know, maybe he's running out to the street or somewhere where you don't want him to go. Pretend like you have it and he'll come to you every time because you pract when you practice, you do have a reward. So you saw how I said, come. I backed away. He came to me. Good. His little nose touched my right hand. It opened up. He got the reward. At the same moment, my left hand grabbed the leash. If he doesn't have a leash on, let's do this again. Go. Come. 
hook your hand under that collar. And in fact, it might be better just to hook your hand under that collar every time because we're always practicing for worst case scenario. Worst case scenario is he's off leash. And so you want him, every time that he comes to you, you want him to be used to um, you know, you getting that treat, but at the same moment he feels your hand grab the leash, come, and he likes it. Good, just like that. So always practice that way. When you back away, the dog is drawn to you. So when you back away, it's, it's so much better than standing still. You, you trigger him to run to you when you back away. And watch, I'll do it with no treat right now. Come, and he'll follow this anywhere. Good boy, good boy. I think I scared him. I didn't hurt him. Good boy. So if you don't have a treat, that's another thing to let you know. Make sure you love him up. Make sure you say good. With a treat, I'm saying good, grabbing his collar at the same moment, getting the treat. Everything happens at the same moment so that when you don't have a treat and you say good, he has a good feeling about it. So uh, it's a little bit of dog, little dog uh, brainwashing there. He, he probably thinks he got the treat because we've done this so much. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is, if he doesn't respond immediately, for some reason when you're practicing the recall, and you're always practicing on a leash when you practice, just give it a little tap, he'll, ba he'll turn around, he'll see you backing away, good, and he'll come to you. So the tap on the leash is kind of like a tap on the shoulder, he's going to see you backing away, he's going to see the target, he's going to run to you, and all he's going to know is that he heard it once, and he came to you and something good happened. So, like with all, all the commands, never repeat that. And the pattern is, he hears it once, he ends up doing it, something good happens, he loves to do it, and so that starts going on by itself, and he'll always do it the first time. Okay. We'll sit. He's very excited, he loves doing this mat exercise. Always lead him up to it and have him, make sure you have him on a leash when you have the mat on the floor. Have him sit because he needs your permission to go on to the mat. With your right hand, you pat his chest and say, go to your mat, walk over with him, say down. He's gonna do that automatically anyway because we've done this so much, but you still wanna say the command. If he pops up, that's a, that's a no. And you reset him. He's just a very excited little guy and sometimes he has a problem focusing. But once he's there, once he gets into the groove, he's really good. He's got a good downstay. Good. And you may notice that <clears throat> when he takes the reward, he takes it off the mat. He doesn't grab it out of my hand and I wouldn't allow him to grab it out of my hand. So he needs to stay really calm. No. If he moves towards my hand, I'm going to pull it back and say no. Good. So make sure that he really waits respectfully to take it off the mat as you, after you withdraw like that. Um, stay is built in to down so you don't have to say stay. And of course I don't say stay because we don't have to. With sit and down, stay is built in. And we teach the dogs to wait to be released. So he's waiting for the release command. You don't have to keep saying stay, stay, stay all the time. There is no stay and so you don't have to say it. Good. Um, you can practice things that are a little bit harder for him to handle, like pulling on the leash, which is usually pretty hard for a dog to handle, but he's staying there, so that's good. Good. Um, you can drop the leash and do bigger circles, walk farther away. Most of what you'll be doing will probably be in your house. We're in a fenced yard right now, so we have more space. I'm going to go this way. I've walked far away from him. He's still in a downstay. I'm going to show him now. I'm going to go back over to him. He's got a really good downstay. He's waiting for me to come back over, reward him. No. Make sure that he really waits. No. And if you have to pull back a few times, you need to do it. No. And you can even push him back with your hand like that. Good. That's what you want to do. And I usually do this for a few minutes at least, and, and we're working up to having him do a five minute downstay, which is really good. So um, 
at your house we're, we're practicing as well to show you how to do it there and show him how to do it there as well. He's really good here, but of course we have to practice everything at your house or else he's only good here and he's not good at your house. So we're, we are in the process of doing that now. One more little walk around. I always walk around both ways. I want him to be used to us walking around either, either side. And then a release. I'm gonna pat my leg and say, okay. He walks off, you have him sit. You always release him this way. Have him sit, always release him from a calm sit stay out of a down. So out of any down, it's okay. And then sit and then go to be free. And then this mat, you have to pick up right away. Either take him, put him out in his little area or in his crate or wherever you wanna do it. Put him, pick this up because it's not a doggy bed. It's not something to hang out on or walk across. It's a very exclusive spot because we only do this one behavior. We only practice this one behavior on the mat. He's learned it really well in a short period of time. And it's because he's only allowed to go on it and do this one behavior. And it's, it's uh, like a uh, fa the fast track to a solid downstay. That's why he's learned this so quickly because of the way we use the mat. So make sure you always pick it up. You can't go on it and it, you always, whenever you put it down, you always lead him up to it and he's on a leash. So he never has an opportunity to just run over and hang out on it. Okay.